they were just a little bit late, and I really apologize. We had some technical glitches on the Facebook end. So delayed us, but we're going to get started right now. I'm going to show you how you can paint this gorgeous ocean scene step-by-step step in acrylic on canvas. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He was the one battling the Facebook glitch. He also makes sure that you can see the... Uh, the technical stuff that I'm doing. So if I'm explaining a technique, if I'm demonstrating a brush stroke, the camera is pointing at what we're doing. So uh, you'll have to bear with me. It's a little, when we have technical glitches, it really throws me. I don't know if it throws you in your life, but it really throws me in mine. It can be a little shaky. It does. It does. It really just like, woo. But the art part of this is pretty easy for me. Let's go over the materials. I want you to check the descriptions on the website, the Art Sherpa official, the Art Sherpa website. There is resources like traceables and transfers so that you don't have to draw. Um, there's also more information about materials, a thousand other videos. So it's a good thing to check. Um, also, we do steps and we're going to timestamp those on the YouTube end and be sure to answer, ask questions during the live. Put those questions all in caps so that the moderators can see them. So I might even answer one of them on the show. Mm -hmm. The surface that we're painting on today is 9 by 12. And I have a wish or intention on here is just that people that are going through uh, the flooding that's happening in the world right now, that you're okay, that your family and friends are okay, that the rescue teams are supported, and that everybody going through that situation has what they need. Um, the paint for today, I believe I'll be using Mars Black and Titanium White. I expect to use Burnt Sienna, Thalo Blue, Quinacridone Magenta. Um, phthalo green, maybe that's a maybe docks purple, a very small amount, had red, had yellow. And I may to get some of the more interesting colors in here, actually get into my tight knit yellow. So if you don't have tight knit yellow, I've got a whole blog about that. That's also in the description that tells you all the exchanges, ways to work around it, even like how you can mix it with craft paint. So it's not something you have to run out and get. It's just a color that I really, really love. That's exciting. How are you guys doing today? I think I need to breathe in the creativity and breathe out the stress. <laughs> I feel so stressed. Okay. Breathe in the creativity. Breathe out the stress. Breathe in the creativity. Breathe out the stress. All right. Breathe in the creativity. Breathe out the stress. I think we've got to adjust the palette today. All okay. right. There we go. I'll let John fix that division in a second when he gets going. All right. Let's call this step one. This you, is going to be that class. You ready to go to step one? <laughs> yeah. Why not? Step one. Here we go. Oh, yeah. You're not going to take a picture of a blank canvas. I've got to paint it. This really <laughs> threw me. It did throw you. It did. It's I okay. don't love it. It's not my favorite. All right, so I'm going to come down here, and this canvas is uh, the 9 by 12. I'm going to come down to about uh, just the 5 and a half inch mark, and I'm going to make a horizontal line across. And that's going to give me a nice area. I might come up a little bit above that for my uh, ocean. I want enough room to be able to put in my big, beautiful sky, but also enough room for my weight. So that's something I want to be thinking about. I'll give you my exact measurement. Keep changing it because I want lots of room. Mm. I think uh, actually four and three quarters. So just a bit below the halfway mark. I'm going to do that. And that way I've got a little room to make that go. So four and three quarters inch, which is, what is that on millimeters, um, centimeters? That's 12 centimeters down if you're doing centimeters because a lot of the world does do centimeters. I'm going to put out um, some color. I'm going to put out a little of my cad yellow, it's a good color to start with. I'm going to put out a little bit of my tight knit yellow. Put out a little bit of my tight knit yellow because I do think I want to use this and play with this today. I'm going to put out some of my cad red. And then we've got this really interesting kind of ombre between this bright, fiery sky and this almost like a green, gray sky at the top. It's really fascinating. Hmm. Um, but it might be a challenging ombre to do if you're new. So I'm going to show you some cool tricks to make it easier and more beginner-friendly. 
All right. <sighs> okay. So I know I'm going to have my sun here. And if my sun is going to be right about here on my surface, I know I'm going to have kind of an interesting ombre of uh, orange and gold around that because of the way that light affects that. I just put that there with my watercolor pencil because my watercolor pencil will disappear into the background. I'm going to go ahead and mist my canvas a little bit. This is just water. I just want to make sure that it begins a little bit uh, wet. I can also kind of brush a little water on. I don't want it soaking, but sometimes on these more economical can canvases, it can be a little challenging to get uh, the canvas to take paint. I don't know if you've had that experience. I certainly see a lot of pictures from you guys showing me you having that experience. I'm taking a little bit of my cad yellow and my cad red. This is a uh, one and a quarter, uh, one inch Princeton mop brush. This is a blending brush. You can find these. I also have these. Uh, I have a one inch mop here. That's the ultimate varnish. I have a bunch of these mops. Several of the companies make them, and they're really nice for blending in acrylic. You can use whatever brush you have if you don't have this brush. All right, here we go. We're just coming up here. Now, there's a really fascinating little ombre that happens. So I'm going to get a little of my tiny yellow kind of towards this orange that I've mixed and a little of my white. And I'm just making sort of a creamy transition color. Maybe even a little more white. I'm blending that down. You can see where the paint is wet. I can blend wet into the wet paint. The blending works best if the paint that's on the canvas and the paint I'm adding are both wet because when acrylic is dry, it does not blend. So that's a way that it's different than oils. When acrylic is dry, it doesn't blend. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and grab just a smidge of my pad red into my Naples yellow light there. You could just do a little into your white. Oh, no, I got a drip there. I was going to ask about that. Is that a big deal? It can be because it can lift the surface and make it not adhere to what's below. Um, I think what happens sometimes is that, uh, you know, you just get into these little moments and you've got to, what I would advise is that uh, the best way to prevent that is to have a calm space in your painting space where you can like focus and think about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, that way you can be kind of attentive to the path of the water to your canvas and avoid the drips if you do get them. It's best to blend them out while everything is still wet if you can. If you can't, you can paint the area over again because they can be really disruptive. I'm going to take a little of my Naples yellow and my phthalo blue. And you can see I'm getting that you know, wild sky color. Hmm. I'll start that over here on the side. Hopefully my surface is still wet here because if it's wet, it will blend very nicely. You see how I can get a nice blend there? And then as I come over, I'm definitely going to want to go more into my white and make quite a light area. You'll notice in the sky, it's very light up at the top. And skies can be very light. That's got to be an unusual blend to get to not to. That's a, I've not seen a lot of those blend colors. It's uncommon. And I think it's because, you know, sometimes we don't think about, I've just got my brush damp on and I just sort of soften the line between these two. Mm -hmm. We don't think of our sky in these terms sometimes. And I just add a little more white over here. I think I could go even brighter, you know? Mm -hmm. Getting that first layer in. So what I'm trying to avoid is a stripe, a stripe, and a stripe where there's a super hard edge. There's going to be a little bit of a delineation, um, but if you work this well, you should be able to have a nice blend between the areas. I am mixing a little more of my 
orange here. I'm gonna lightly pull that up there. Come back with a little white into it. Just make sure that we have some nice kind of little sky transitioning space. I lighten my pressure when I'm blending so that my brush just sits across the top. That can really help the area. Put a little more of my red into it, make a brighter orange. Come on the bottom. Some fun little color combos there. That's kind of what we're trying to get to. Mm -hmm is that nice little transition. Um, it can take a minute to get it. If you're having trouble blending, I've got a video on how to blend acrylic-like oils and it gives you a lot of strategies. Remember the conditions of your studio, the quality of your paint and your surface can all affect blending. Not to mention the amount of water on your brush and the type of brush that you have. So all of those things can play against your blending. And if you're having trouble, don't assume it's you first. Recognize there are a lot of external variables that can make blending easier or more difficult. So if you find yourself having trouble and you don't know why, go ahead and watch that video because it might answer one of your questions and you'll realize, oh, it was never me. It was some other outside problem that isn't about me at all. Hmm. All right, I think we're ready for the next step. Yeah, I think so. So during this, we'll take a picture of this step. We like to uh, take the steps and uh, write up instructions um, uh, like with the pictures so that on top of the video lesson, you have the opportunity about seven to 10 days after the video lesson to use a downloadable mini book. It's like a small little book that tells you about this lesson. Um, I put, uh, we get a lot more into the lessons uh, than you might think. Uh, I, I know I find a lot of frustration with instruction manuals. So there's a lot of information out there and it can be that extra little aid. If you're having trouble with a concept or an idea or you're feeling overwhelmed by a lesson, to be able to let you get into what's happening and not feel so challenged. All right. That's pretty good. I do think for the next part, I would like it to be dry. So I'm going to take a second and dry the background mm -hmm. with my hair dryer. And John. All right, guys. So I'm going to make sure that I've got your reference photo up here. There it goes. And don't forget, check in the link in the description down below for all the information about today's painting. Um, you can see... There's a traceable, I think, there. There's a reference image and a website. If you go out there, theartsherpa.com. And we have a calendar, which we generally keep up with all the stuff. Uh, this weekend, we're going to be putting some videos up because we're going to be out this weekend. So you can check there for the information. For the information. Because the information is furry. Is it? Apparently. I just... Is it? Apparently All right. When I drop the so vowels. I've got glazing medium, and I'm going to take the glazing medium and put it on my palette. This product, this is Gloss Glazing Liquid by Golden Artist Color. Now, you've got to kind of ignore the name a bit because glaze isn't always a blending medium or an extender, but this particular brand product is a blending medium and an extender, which means I can glaze and blend. A lot of times you can do one or the other, but not both in the same product. This is in the same product. So that's how it's a little different than other products out there. I'm gonna go ahead and take this brush again. I'm gonna make sure it's kind of dry, and I'm going to play a little bit more with my color through the sky, because I feel like there's almost, if I get into this, I'm going to get some of my glazing medium on it too. So there's a bit of a, a blending. Mm. I'm going to come right here a bit into this light base. I want it to be even a little more light. And I can kind of try to make sure. So when I put the clouds in, there's a bit of that, that bright area and 
the uh, yellow area. I want mm-hmm. both of those in there. This is a I, very unusual sky. It's a very unusual sky. It's what attracted me to the concept of it is just getting into something something completely different. So I might calm. even add a little purple to this. So I've taken my phthalo blue and a little bit of purple. I'm going to turn this to the side only so I have a better kind of handle on it. And I'm going to brush back and forth. See how my brush is very light and open and dry. I'm going to come here and just kind of maybe even get a little more purple into this mix. Mm -hmm. Like you do. A little more white. There's some very unexpected colors that are happening in the sky. And I definitely want to take advantage of them and enjoy them. I'm going to switch out of this brush into my other favorite blender. I think there's a couple brushes one would have in acrylic if you can. One is a mop synthetic around one inch that um, you can use for blending. And the other one is the 12, number 12 round blender by Princeton. I have not found this brush in another line. I am looking because I always like it when there's several different companies that have a brush. But this one I've only found in this line, and it's the number 12 Princeton Select Round Blender. I'm going to go ahead and, interestingly enough, load up some dot purple and my uh, Naples yellow. And we're going to get that strange sky putty color. Even put a little blue in it if I need to to putty it up more. you got to find your putty. And I'm going to start to puff out or paint out these irregular little Hmm. cloud shapes. My pressure is light. There tends to be a curve in my brush stroke. And I'm trying to make little irregular shapes. The things that will make a cloud feel and look like a cloud are soft edge, that it has the right kind of shading that says to you, this is a cloud. Mm -hmm. Because clouds are very rarely white cotton balls. Do we have any questions? Let's go back over here. I was just watching you. I'm switching back and forth so I can uh, have to go check the questions here. I saw a lot of folks over here on Facebook that were dropping questions and stars so i'm gonna go over and see if i can find oh, out what's going on thank you for that guys i really appreciate that cindy was saying that she can't wait to try this one totally something totally different than what we normally do it's got some unusual yellows in it, it has very unusual colors but unusual palette and that makes it a lot of fun I have to look back and forth between the two of them so I don't miss what's going on. So Ashley says, sending you much love and light. Big thank you to Cinnamon and John for all of our ama- and our, all of our amazing mods. Thank you as well to the amazing community. Grateful to be part of this amazing gang, is what Ashley says. Oh my gosh, Ashley, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. And Eileen was asking, are you using glazing, the, gla- the glaze right now? I am using a little of the glaze right now. It was in that brush early, so there is a smidge of it. Um, I wouldn't say for this particular one that um, uh, that's super, super essential for this technique, but in my studio, conditions are a little dry. Mm -hmm. So I'll either run a humidifier or I'll use something like a wet palette or even glazing medium to make sure that um, what I have the environment that I have is conducive to what I'm painting. Because like we said, those those weird hidden factors that can be just throwing you off that are not your fault, that have nothing to do with your ability to follow a tutorial that can really, really make things much more challenging. I'm going to get a little more white. And you can see glazing medium. The glazing medium does help the flow. Uh, if Again, if you don't have the tight knit yellow, or it's sometimes called uh, light Naples yellow, mm-hmm. but some Naples yellow is not this color, so it's definitely a journey to find it. 
um, which is why I wrote a blog about like everything you needed to know about the color. It is a cool color. I don't ever bother you with something that this is it now, challenging unless it is awesome. Okay, now is it a cool color? temperature wise or a cool color because it's like neato burrito neato burrito color <laughs> but is it cool it actually is our cool yellow we okay. we do a split primary palette and so we have a warm yellow and a cool yellow and if you look at these two right here it's these are the furthest yellows apart because i love extremes so this is a cad yellow medium it's quite a warm yellow it's not as warm as deep which i think is totally orange but it is a pretty warm yellow. And this Naples yellow, uh, the tiny yellow, you can see is almost a green bias. It's quite cool. So you're being, Even though they're both yellow. You're both being actual and metaphorical. Both, both. I'm going to add some of my orange here to the mix. As I come out on this cloud, I want to I wanna kind of pull it into the background sky color. Can you see how I did that there? Mm -hmm. I took the orange and added it to my, my purple. I'm just lightly dusting. See how light that cloud is? You need some light clouds, guys. They can't all be super intense shapes on the horizon. Some of them are far away and distant and kind of minding their own business. Mm -hmm. They're just clouding away. And they're just clouding away. That's what we're doing. I'm just kind of adding a little bit of a low bank there. Just putting a low bank. Off in the distance, I could go a little more into my magenta and uh, cad red. Mm -hmm. And on the slow bank, I might add a bit of that kind of heat to that. Look at that. A little blendy, blendy. Come here and also kind of add a little bit of a, a low horizon drama I blend that up Just building up that interest now I don't have to really worry that about the clouds too much back here because we have that mountain which mm -hmm. is why you don't see me like really focusing on developing them far far away get a little more of my tidy yellow and dot purple and we're going to come here and you know kind of paint out a little bank hmm. a couple little poofers hmm. little tiny fluffy fluffers out in the out in the sky Little poof. Little. Th I'm going to turn this to the side a little bit so that I have a nice angle for my brushing out. This I do like on my canvas. So I've turned my surface. This isn't the camera's turn or any of that. This is the horizon line of the water, and I'm just turning my surface a little bit. Um, you should always move your canvas, not your body. You don't want to move your body when you're trying to paint. Um, that's how you get injured. So you've got to figure out a way to reposition your canvas hmm. so that you're comfortable in your painting. I'm bringing that there. Like doing the sky. And you can see that we're starting to get that wonderful effect. Mm -hmm. It might take really a couple pretty. layers to really build it out, and that's okay. You've got the time. Now, can you talk about the use of glazing medium a bit more? There were folks that, that just weren't sure quite when to use it and when not to use it. Okay. You can use it anytime. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, that's good to know. So This particular product you can use anytime. You can add it to every, pa every paint that you use. It, what it does 
what it specifically does is uh, improves the drag. Have you ever felt the drag of your brush across a canvas? Like it almost feels like the canvas is pulling against it. It makes it smoother. You'll find there's less resistance to your brush. Um, it slows the drying time of your paint down because as you know, as the paint dries, it's tougher to blend. So it gives you a little more time to blend. Um, you can also use it to extend your paint. And in other words, the paint you have goes further because you're using more of the medium there than the paint. And because it's also a glaze, whereas other slow drying agents, you can only use a percentage of them to your paint. This could be all gla glaze and very little paint. So it is a glaze. It can be a thin, transparent color. Hmm. Now, it slows the drying time down. So you have to calculate for that. Your painting will not be dry as quickly. This is basically the medium, the clear medium that is in open acrylic paints. Open acrylic means that the drying time is open, not as closed, kind of self-explanatory there, mm -hmm. and that you have a little more time to get yourself worked out. We all need a little more time to get ourselves worked out. Now I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna weirdly add Hopefully not too much. I'm going to get some of my blue into this. It makes a kind of cooler color to the whole thing. And come on underneath here and shade some of my clouds with the blue and purple and Naples yellow. Definitely an unusual color set I don't normally go into. It's important to give your cloud shadow. Mm -hmm. You definitely can use the glazy medium anytime. You just want to use it when um, it feels comfortable to you. But you should always grab it if you're having a great deal of difficulty blending and your paint is drying on the palette too quickly and on your canvas too quickly. Mm. This is on its own would not normally be a pretty color. It is a pretty color in relationship to everything else that's going on. I like to just have a minute to play with this. Be relaxed about that. I'm going to grab a little of my yellow and my purple. I think that that, exp that explanation of the glazing medium really helps. Does that help? I'm so glad. Sorry I was so thrown at the beginning of class. Oh, no. You're okay. Those Usually I'm um, pretty on point. Coming here and adding a little bit of this light. And you can see I'll tap that little kind of airy bit. Mm -hmm. Got a little airy bit. A little bit of the cloud that could be going on outside. I think sometimes we forget to uh, really shade our clouds and really paint our clouds. We're so busy mm -hmm. making little cloud shapes that we forget all the, the biz about that. I think we'll call that a step. We still have some more clouds to do, but in the next bit, it's all going to really come together in this like crazy sunset way that you guys are going to love. Yeah. And so uh, breaking this down in a step will help. I am going to dry the surface. Go ahead and dry it. So that the next layer I can glaze or blend easy. Okay. Wow. That's a, and you can find information. I'm pretty sure there's a link in the description down below for the glazing meeting. If it's not there now, I'll ask that she puts it back in there after the show uh, and I don't know how long she's going to be gone drying so I don't know how long to talk to you guys that's the job of the co-host is to fill 
the hair drying space with talking. So talky, 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 talky. So I'm supposed to say stuff and be interesting, but I'm not that interesting. All right. I'll let you get a picture okay. of this for the step. I'll set my drink. Is there any questions that I can let me go look. take while we're on our step break? There's everyone saying this is that they really appreciated the, uh, let me scroll down here. They really appreciated the um, glazing stuff. Uh, what is your arm resting Oh, is your arm resting on a table or working from your shoulder when you're sitting there? Let me. Um, at this angle, I would say it's probably resting on my arm rests. Um, I do try to, because I paint every day, um, I try to find ways to rest or not strain my shoulder. It's not that art in itself is particularly straining, but if you're lifting in your rotator a lot, you can find that you have weird little fatigue injuries. <laughs> So I do have little strategies of keeping myself from uh, being too exhausted. So I make sure that my table height and my chair height are well matched. So if I need to rest my arm, you know, when I'm painting, I'm actively painting, my arm is lifted and engaged. But when it's doing something small or repeated or I need to rest it, I have that right here on my very comfy art chair, which you've got to love. You have to have strategies, my friends, mm -hmm. strategies to be okay. All right. We've got some really fun color things going on. One of the fun things we have going on is we've got some beautiful uh, kind of distant in the sunlight cloud. So I'm going to take my Quinn and my Cad Red and a smidge of yellow and then make these fiery clouds that are come here, you know, on the edge of this. I can always get a little of my... Blaze medium out there. Mm -hmm. No, I know I'm going to paint my little sun, but it's just nice to kind of pull this out. And I'm going to turn to the side and getting a little yellow into that. Just to pull some of these through. I'll let that rest for a smidge of a second. Um, get a little of my Naples in there and make sure that there's a little blending transition mm -hmm. of this fire. That fire, some blending transition. And then uh, I want to also put some, Maybe some fire back back through here. And we'll add a little bit of lighting and everything to that a bit in just a second. Hmm. All right, let that have its rest. Let's grab a number four round. And we're going to do a couple things. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a lot of my white and a smidge of my yellow. And I'm going to start thinking about my sun, which I'm going to put right here. <laughs> okay. G. Marcus would like you to show on camera how much a smudge is. A smidge. That's a smidge. smidge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now. Scotch. <laughs> two smidges is, is that they smidges? Two smidges is a scotch. Is a, it's a scotch. You know, I should actually come up with a thing. What it, what it is, I actually think if it helps, I think in cooking terms, um, how much uh, of a very strong, overwhelming flavor would I add? Like if I was taking like ghost peppers, like that's the amount I would be like, I would add it to the chili to see if it was going to work uh -huh. out before going like into any eighth of a teaspoon measurement. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I do kind of think of in those terms and that does help me. I've got my nice little a kind of white spot there and I'll go ahead and get a little yellow. It's super easy how our sun appears to us. I mean super interesting how our sun appears to us from mm -hmm. Earth. 
because, you know, we have this very unusual relationship to it. We can't really look at it, but we see it all the time. I'm adding some little yellow glaze. Now, do you think this is sunset or sunrise? Uh, definitely is a sunset mm. based on the color. So, um, interestingly enough, sunrisers have some really fantastic uh, color scapes for sure, but it's only in the evening through pollution and your fatigue dies that you see these big, <laughs> these big little moments going on. Oh, all the moments of that. So I'm going to come here with my little brush and just make sure that this is kind of interesting. I can come across here. I can even take a little of my purple over to it just to darken it and get my little cat right into it. And tap the my brush a bit. So the cloud is going in front. Clouds can do that. Sun cannot go in front of the clouds, but clouds can go in front of the sun. Mm -hmm. If the sun goes in front of the clouds, well, you're not here anymore. <laughs> so it's really not a problem that you have. But seriously, you're not here anymore. It isn't a problem that you have. I think we're going to find that we see some skies and some weather that we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. And there's certainly a lot of uh, unpredictable weather going on around the world. And I think we're going to see really interesting uh, spaces to paint. I'm going to come here and I'm going to kind of just piece that out. I don't want to have that cloud. A little more white here, maybe. A little white there in that inside corner. The little highlights on the clouds that you might have. Mm-hmm. making that more interesting. I'm going to put a little of my orange in there between the cloud and the a very bright little orange. And then I'm going to take some of this orange and I'm going to come along of this cloud a bit and you can see I'm sort of wiggling my brush mm -hmm. trying to speak to maybe some of the glow that you might see going on outside of things a little more of my bright orange which is my cad red and my cad yellow come into the bottom of clouds you can get into the magenta if you need to, to get kind of a transitional orange. Mm. Those little glowing clouds are glowing, right? Mm -hmm. Get them glows are glowing. Because they do. Just using my number for round. Just sort of highlighting those along the sky there, huh? So what happens, here's what, this is why you're seeing what it is. The sun is down here, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a hot or warm light cast into the silhouette of the clouds. So the silhouettes are dark shapes because 
they're solid and the sun's behind them, it's kind of silhouetting them. But there's also light reflecting up underneath them and coloring them because things bounce, light bounces, it does some interesting things. And it comes up and it makes these little under light reflections on the clouds as the sun is lower in the sky. It's sort of all awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of making this interesting under there. I think there's just every reason to make it interesting. Mm -hmm. I like to. You can see everywhere you put that little glow, it, it has pretty big impact, right? Oh, it does. Pretty darn big impact. I'm going to take a little bit of my white. Maybe even some of my yellow. And uh, add a little of that impact underneath some of my clouds. So we're just hot, hot lining them. Very irregular little wandery shape here. Getting those little, sometimes more yellow. Mm. Oh man, all the love out here on Facebook. Thank you guys. So much. Oh my goodness. Look, we got a gorgeous sky going, don't we? This is we? really looking good. This is just, it's not something that you would necessarily just know how to get into or paint. But once you see it, when you do see an unusual sky like this, you're always going to be from now on going, oh yeah, I got that. Give me my colors. I got that. I can do it. Hold my coffee. I got this. <laughs> Yours looks better than the picture. Oh, thank you. Thank you so is much. Is this a step? This is a step. All right, I mean, down. Totally a step. What step are we on? Let's see what it says. It says a four step. A four step? A four step. Wow, that's really good. So we got a distant mountain to put into the sea. When things are far away, when we think about distant objects, we think about things that are not as saturated in color and are lighter and closer to the value of the sky. Um, that's how you paint those misty mountains coming forward or anything that you're trying to push into the distance. If you're having trouble getting your mountains far, far away from you, chances are you're just not making them light enough or dull enough. Isn't that weird? But let's go ahead and make ourselves a nice dull mountain. So I'm going to take a little of my purple out and quite a lot of my yellow. I might even get a little of my magenta into this. I think I will come here and draw up a little cliff side. Mm -hmm. A little cliff side. <laughs> so it's very light and distant, isn't it? That's a cliff there. Mm-hmm. With the face, little 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 land mass of mountain coming in. A lot of times what you have is you have inlets or bays or areas that allow um you see a lot of little sailing ships out on the water. Mm -hmm. Is generally an indication that there is a protected area in the body of water. And so You got to show that it's protected by painting an area that's protected, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab a little bit of my uh, magenta. So 
some of my white. It has a bit of the purple in it. We'll come up and paint just some little pops of highlight coming down the cliff. Like this is a little forward facing area. Start to paint those little differences in, right? I can always come back in to a slightly more purple, right? Or slightly more deep color. I love that putty color. Good putty color. We can even get that blue back into that if you remember. Really cools it. Makes a nice shadow. Look at that. Mm. On any mountainside, you'll have areas that uh, are a little more in shade. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, cast away a little more light. And then areas that will catch a little more light. And whatever you're painting, be it close or far, you're going to need to reflect that in what you have. I also think it's a nice idea to take a little of the magenta and some of the yellow and kind of make a bit of an orangey pink highlight. It should kind of glow. I can always get some wane into it. See how we're Creating a little glow on our hillside. I do see the little glow. Like to put some glows around. Glow it up. So distant, thoughtful, a little pinker here on the outer edge. Yeah. The water, a little distant. Great amount of thought put into a distant hill, but it's compositionally actually pretty important to what's going on. All the little details there. Yeah. Why not? Feels like what it is. Mm hmm. All right, let's call that a step. We've got that in. We have a lot of wave and water to put in. A so there's a good distance in front of us of splashy, splashy painting. So let's get a picture of this. And we'll start to put in our water. Water. Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Not unless you're a sea creature. Do they, do they drink water? Do they absorb water? I don't know. I watch a lot of True Facts by Zafrank, who is very funny, but not safe for work. <laughs> yeah, I think whales accidentally swallow a lot of things that they have to spit out later. <laughs> I imagine whales have like all kinds of whale stories that they tell. So uh, if you haven't caught the uh, documentary by David Attenborough, The Day the Earth Changed, they did a whole thing to look at. Um, how uh, the world stopping for COVID impacted the planet. And I would say, like, not that there's a lot of silver linings on what's happened here, but if there was one, that documentary is, is one of them. I really enjoyed it very, very, very much. 
I'm going to come along here and I want to make sure that I've got kind of that distance little glow down into my water. So I'm going to take a little magenta and I'll come a little bit above my horizon line. Come across here. It's very transparent little glaze. Just making sure that I've got a nice Base because I'm going to, I really want to drop my horizon line level. Having a level horizon line makes a huge difference in um, how your ocean looks, right? I'm going to take a watercolor pencil and try to make a good clear line that I can follow in orange. Sometimes that's hard to see. I like the watercolor pencils because they'll uh, vanish into the painting. Uh, chalk will also work. Um, and that kind of gives me a starting place to kind of think about. I need to paint in uh, this stuff sort of uh, horizontally, but I also have a wave. My wave, I'm going to use that same watercolor pencil, starts about here and ends about here. So whatever I've got going on, I've got to take it across here and the shadow of the wave starts at about here and kind of comes to about here that will be going up so I've got to think about that and then I have some pretty glorious little waves that come across the water like this and you've got it we've got to capture them especially where they are capturing the light so using my watercolor pencil can let me make some sketches, some compositional structure and mapping without uh, disrupting the whole piece. Now I'm going to find a brush that I can paint the background in with. I think I'll take a cat's tongue. This is a number eight cat's tongue. You don't have to have this brush. It's a nice brush to have. You don't have to have it. And I think I am going to add a little of my um, phthalo green there. Uh, I could mix a green with my yellow, but I think I just want to get a phthalo green out there so I have a base to work with because there is a bit of green in the ocean here. But let's start with this. It starts out with a bit of an orange. I'm going to come across here with a bit of an orange. And I'm using the line to help guide me on the edge of my brush to make sure that I've got a pretty nice line. This is Ready Ocean Color 1. I know I did that. Now at the top of these waves, they'll be a little bit lighter so I can actually Sort of think about that little spot there and its little friend using my lighter color. And then I can get back into my yellow. I just want to be able to see that wave as it comes across, and that can be a little challenging. I'm going to take my blue and my green together and some of my uh, add yellow. And I'm going to come to the outside edge. I might even weirdly, I know this is so strange, but I might get into that strange color I have over here just to be a little more muted. And come across and kind of blend into the orange. So much like the sky, this is definitely its own sort of color challenge, isn't it? Take a little glazing medium, 
And let's work that here. There we go. Sort of feather that in. I do not want that green in the distant horizon to lift up above the horizon line, so I may come back and clean that up. Get a little green over there and get a little orange into it. And it's amazing how just adding that little bit of green in kind of tints it. as unusual of an ocean color as a sky color. And I think that's important to um, think about. Come forward and add a little of my magenta. And I may start getting my burnt sienna out real soon. going back and forth just trying to make sure that we have that kind of mapping in of our water let's put out a little bit of our burnt sienna um, it can be a nice time to have it out and it gives us you know I, there's a little bit of that kind of brown green in there and so sometimes that can be a little bit helpful I can take a little of my kind of green and blue and brown Got some white on that. I don't want that. Rinse that out. All right. So I'm going to take a little of my brown, and I think I'm going to get into some orange. There we go. Mm, just a second, maybe. Good love one. I just gotta get this dark. They're really unusual dark colors. I've got to get the value and then the really. Unexpected water colors in. A little more gold to that, a little more of the yellow. Now, as we work over here, we do get back into that blue and green. Look, definitely kind of put some of that here. And then we're going to play with that with the gold. It's actually quite fun. But right now, at this point, we're just mapping our ocean a little bit. Notice that I'm blending this over some. I'm here in just a little bit of yellow. What a colorful sea, right? The front here is very dark, darker than you think. I'm going to take a little of my uh, green and blue. I will actually start it in the green and blue, even though I know I'm going to be taking it many, many darker colors.
We'll just begin here with some green and blue. along here. I know I'm going to be much more orange here, but we're just blending this under sky, this underwater kind of space in, much like we blended in the sky. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of wave to paint in here. Add a lot of white to that. Just to retain the light of it. Just getting the surface painted. Mm -hmm. Getting the waves mapped. Okay, let's get a picture of this because you okay. want to get in kind of this basic value scape, sort of paint it in, and then uh, we'll come back and I want to dry this actually first too. All right, whoop, whoop. there we go. And <laughs> now she'll take the coffees. Hold on. Zoop. Coffee time. All right, so don't forget check link in the descriptions down below. Uh, don't forget to check the mini books. Those will be coming out pretty soon. Mm, what else do we got? We're going to do a step soon here pretty soon. I think here's a second. Here, two, two. There she is. Pictures. I'm going to put out some more yellow while we're getting pictures and put out some more of my yellow. And I'll put up another step. I you know. Yeah, coffee is a little sweet, but good. I mean, like, when is sugar a bad thing, right? <laughs> Oh, you didn't do the double push? Oh, no. It shorted your coffee. It's a vicious machine. Doesn't it know what we do all day? It should be much less heartless to us. Okay. So we have this great background, right? Lots of light, lots of exciting things, and some wonderful wave dynamics coming forward. Um. One of the things that we can do is sort of interesting is I'm going to take a, a fan brush and I'll take one that's a hog just because that's easy to work with. Hog is a bristle from a pig. Uh, I'm going to also change out my water to something cleaner because I will want to have a little more control. See how muddy that is? That's time for that to go. All right. So in the wave itself, we've got yellow with a titch of the... Uh, red in it. And I'm going to definitely use my glazing medium. And I'm going to curve this stroke. Can you guys see me curving it? Let's see here. Let me get over here if I can. Look over your shoulder. From the there top. We... I will be folding this wave. Absolutely will be folding it. But sometimes if you can get some of this basic value in with the right perspective, it can make a big difference in your outcome at home. So this is just a trick to get in the right perspective. Let's put out some more white so we can lighten our values enough. Maybe even a little more yellow. Glazing medium can help improve the flow. Mm -hmm. And again, this just gives us a place to start. So this fan brush, 
You want one stiff enough to give you a curve. A fan brush, you don't want to do your whole wave with a fan brush, but a fan brush actually can be a really useful little wave pool when you know what you're trying to get into. I know I have a little bit of light up here in this, this part of the wave, so I'll definitely start to think about that. Now, right around here is when the water is kind of leveling out. So what you have is this sort of leveling and going up. Can you see me do this? Mm -hmm. That's how you're getting that wave perspective. Sometimes it's hard to see. I want a very dark base, right? I'm going to take my green and blue and maybe even my brown and give myself a very dark base. Slide you over there just a little bit. I'm going to give myself a little more blending medium. Go dark. Very challenging color scheme. Mm -hmm. So be patient with yourself. And make sure I have the horizontal water, water that's sort of flattened out. Okay, so if it's there, it kind of can come up. See how we can get that in a weird way? Mm -hmm. And again, it's just the start, guys. Wow, that's really got that trends. The, the, you can see through the wave. Yeah, we're going to be able to see through the wave. We're going to be able to fold the wave easier now. We're going to be able to do all those things much easier now. It just can be somewhat hard sometimes to get the transitions that you need. Let's grab a little of our yellow and uh, some of our white. Grab a little orange there. Mm -hmm. Fun to play with the color schemes. Um, take the damp brush and just make sure that everything is somewhat worked out. And that just gives us the beginning. The beginning, the beginning. And it will help us hit those darker, darker values as we go. Let's let that have, I'm going to dry it. Okay. Such a cool translucent wave. I think a lot of that's in that brush stroke and the blends there, man. That's just you neato. Know. So thoroughly dry that between this step uh, and the next one because you're going to want to make sure that as you're layering the paint, you can get the appropriate effect. And that requires sometimes the layer underneath to be fully dry. So uh, when you're drying, don't use heat. That's probably one of the big things because it can make the surface soft and sticky and you don't want that to have happen because then you will have a sticky surface. Surface. And sticky surfaces stick. Hmm? Don't use heat. 
Makes it sticky. <laughs> yes, kind of. All right, so we're going to come along here, and I'm going to just take a little white paint, and we're going to come to about right here, not quite the halfway point on the surface. Mm -hmm. right, and we know we've got a little of a, of a little rough bit of a wave. We know it crests over here some. Oh, you think you're taking back your... You didn't like it. Uh, like, I will happily drink the caffeinated sweetness. You're not appreciative enough. <laughs> <laughs> I just share. Okay. So, and then here, coming from really this corner, going down, we know we've got a wave cresting. And the waves kind of come back and forth. That knowledge of the shape of the wave, right, mm -hmm. is huge. I'm going to take my number 12 round blender. I'm going to make a very bright orange. Right there. You're even getting right into some yellow there. It's very nice. Um, we're going to just pull green over here because sometimes green can be nice to tone the oranges with. And we've also got some brown. Get into this, yes. Mm -hmm. Blendy, blendy, blend. You can see how I'm getting those like aquatic golds. Mm -hmm. Little white and yellow being in here. I'm going to come back down to this far end. Bring in some yellow over that curl. Oh, that's a curl. Right. Definitely. A little of that orange yellow. And then a little light yellow where the light maybe is peeking through the wave as it mm -hmm. curls. Rinse out just a little bit because we're starting to just see the shape of this wave. We're going to do some, some wild stuff. I'm going to take a little of my green and my dark purple. I know, madness. But as you can see, over the Whoa. base of what we have, if you're trying to create a depth, an inky depth. Look at that go. And I can blend that transition in the water. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
I know it's going to be dark underneath my foam. Get into that brown over here. Make sure the inky depths are inky. Mm. Right? Or inky, inky depths. Unexpected color mixes. Technically, we're making blue, as you will learn about in a video that we should release very soon. This is very pretty. Let's get what you've got to at least here. Mm -hmm. Um. And you can take a minute to soften this line. We're going to come and soften it again and again because with water, that's an important aspect of it. Yep. Finding these transitions and making sure that they are just coming through with a damp brush and making sure it's soft. So we're going to take a picture of that. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come back. See, it give you a step in that. You're not going anywhere. I'm going to go. You're going to stay there. Talk to I'm them. not going anywhere. So in the ocean, there the pers there's a couple areas of perspective. The curl of the wave, the horizon line, the ripples in the water. Um, there's also, weirdly, in the sea foam perspective, because where it's sort of flat, um, sea foam will have little breaks and openings that tend to be roundish. And then as it pulls up the wave, the shape of that becomes elongated, broken, or stretched. So when you're trying to paint that in a wave, you've got to be kind of thoughtful about that. I feel like I've got a little more drama in the wave that I could do, but let's... Let's let this have a moment and come back and think about our backgrounds, right? Mm, all right. Because we've had a lot of stuff happening here in the background. I'm going to take a little of my yellow. Mix it into this, like, weird red and green that's back here. That's a lot more red. The other colors that we can use are the purple and yellow in the sky. And there's a lot of colors we actually have access to to create shading in our water. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because uh, water tends to be a reflection of the sky. So if I wanted to come through with, like, say, my uh, sky purple, I could absolutely do that to create little shadows in the way. Making sure that I have a little bit of that over here if mm -hmm. I want to use that. And I'll show you what I mean. Everything we did in the sky, we can do in the water. We're going to make little shadows in the distant water. The shadows represent maybe uh, little bits of wave. You can switch to a smaller brush if the brush you have is not giving you enough control over that. I find that the little distant wave lines are lines that become thicker and thinner. Um, they don't have just a single thickness. Mm -hmm. It is nice to make some of them a little darker. And we can even come in and make some of them a little more magenta. Much like in our sky, we can play with all those same colors. Mm -hmm. And I may switch myself down into a smaller brush just to give myself peace. This is a number one monogram liner. And I'm going to go ahead and get into my magenta.
and say, oh yeah, I like that a lot better. Sometimes if you're just trying to make like distant lines and effects, it just really helps to have the size of tool that can really work for you. Mm. I'm going to take a little of my yellow and perhaps my white. I may turn my uh, surface a little bit to the right so that I can have some control over my lines. Mm -hmm. You can always highlight the tops of your waves. Little white and yellow. I just definitely want to get in there and I'm gonna get a little bit of my yellow. I'm gonna paint the water between waves using my uh, detail brush. Now we're just trying to create a little bit of mm -hmm. get a little of my yellow and red. I'll just paint some distant little chop, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to blend in that purple. Add a little reflection through here mm -hmm. of the uh, highlights of water. Such a pretty painting. It is. A lot of fun to do. It takes a second. It's true. But it's a little bit of effort. But completely worth getting in. Mm -hmm. We're making sure that we've got a nice little corridor of light coming down from this interior. And just like a little bit of a bigger highlight down that metal. See how we're doing? Mm -hmm. Getting the reflections there on the surface. Working those reflections on the surface. Finding the little distant waves, playing with that kind of space. These things all have uh, grabbed my magenta, my purple, and my phthalo uh, green to make a very unusual kind of shadow. And we're going to just make sure that we've got some shadows. These are little little shadows coming out into the water. In the far away water, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And you need those. So 
sometimes a little more phthalo green. Sometimes a little bit of your inky blue, which was your dark purple and your... As you come out further, you can get into your darker colors, can't you? Mm -hmm. These are just distant little ripply waves. I get into my magenta. Shadows of the wave. I want them to be a little broken up. Mm -hmm. And then I might grab a little of my green and blue and some white together. A little of my purple to it. And you give the ocean a little highlight. Mm -hmm. Maybe above where some of those shadows are. See how that's going kind of really I like that the transition from yellow to blue. Nice fun look, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And I can come here and get a little of my magenta and my pad red and some of my white. I, I also love the tight yellow in this. Mm -hmm. That pink through here so that kind of transitions into that blue. Now you like painting here at this table. I do. It's much more comfortable for me than standing, but I know sometimes we like easel classes, so I try mm. to make sure we do some too. Mix it up. I like to mix it up from bigger. You know, it's more sustainable if you paint with me a lot, a lot, to do little canvases more often than big canvases rarely. Mm. And thank you to everyone out there on Facebook with all the stars, all those wonderful stars I see, and all the super chat, and all the folks out on uh, YouTube. No bright pinks. coming out in that wonderful mm -hmm. rinse that out and then um, I'm gonna come here and grab a little bit of a light color grab a little bit of a light color and highlight the tops of something. They were just capturing a couple of the little little waves and things in the far off distance. Mm -hmm. Little highlights. Look at those go. Let's call that a step. We did a lot there. We painted some really gorgeous distant water. Did you? Some well, water. hopefully we did together. Well, I, I've been watching you. I'm, I'm a, I am a observing 
Uh, You're an observing pr participant. I'm an observing participant. That's good to be an observing Step participant. Step it up. We're actually getting pretty close to being done, believe it or not. When it comes together at this last bit, it goes pretty fast. This is kind of like one of those bike rides where it's a ride uphill and a ride uphill and a ride uphill, but then you get to the summit and it's all downhill from there. This is one of those paintings where we're going to ride uphill, ride uphill, and then we're going to get to the summit, and then it's all uphill and downhill from there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're going to break physics. That's what we're, we're going to do. We're, we're going to work and work and work and work. And when we get to the top, we're going to do more work. <laughs> I'm going to get some of my yellow and uh, orange together over here on my brush. I want to make a pretty bright color. And come to the top of this way. Kind of a similar thing here. Kind of got a double peak. Go ahead and get some wine into this. A little bit more yellow. little kind of top of the top of the wave there sort of transitional space mm -hmm. I'm going to get into my um, purple and green that deep inky color right because it's just so fantastically inky come along under here and with my blender brush Very carefully before the paint is dry, blend it up. Ooh. And take a little of my brown on the brush mm -hmm. kind of blend that in the brown a little blue thank you Deb a little green Come over here. And if I need to add a little blending medium on it, I will. Is that out? I want to take a little of my magenta mm -hmm. and I'm going to come over the top if I need a little yellow in my magenta I will get it there we're doing the base of the wave and it's now kind of like a horizontal space mm -hmm. You can get more white into it if you need to. This is a hard transition to do. Light pressure is my friend, your friend, our friends. Always get a little red into it or a little yellow into it. I'm just making a very bright reflected area. And then over here, I'll come in and sort of lightly dust this, my yellow into it. I'm going to say thank you to Tam for saying thank you so much to everyone. We miss you too. 
And Mary Meyer says, uh, hey, Cinnamon, that looks like a great vacation spot you found for me. <laughs> I'm very happy to take you to this vacation spot. I'm going to mix some orange. Mix some orange with me and come on vacation. <laughs> So we're going to pull this in. The orange is going to now come over what is mostly dry shadow color in the wave. And I'm going to blend that over the top. Maybe a little more orange, a little more blending medium. Still pretty dark, but we've, uh, we've definitely goldened it up, right? And then some yellow and white. Trying to get that space, that wave there, right? Second wave. This is the only kind of second wave I want in my life. Mm -hmm. I have learned some more brown. So that gives us like that second little kind of kind of wave going on, and then I can come down the water here as we come further out, right? Then perhaps another little little depth charge right there, a little <laughs> little water ripple. Shading there. The shading only works if what the paint is there underneath is still wet. That's when the shading works. Otherwise, it's not so helpful. I'm going to take a little of this and maybe even some yellow. There's sort of some fun little pink that I can yeah. get over here. And isn't that fun? A little pink. Makes it look really cool. really like that part. Maybe in front of that shadow, it's a little more yellow, right? Mm -hmm. And then in front of this one, it's a little more yellow. And the reason for that is that wall of light coming down. Kind of makes it that way. Beams. The beams. along here with a little bit of white and gold top of the wave a little bit behind there mm -hmm. That's a number four round. It's just the number four round. I'm going to grab a little bit of my yellow in here. I'm going to blend a little bit of that yellow into that foam. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's just right there. That's edge. Nice. 
kind of more of a cool foam. Mm -hmm. So it's got a little blue in it. Can even have a little pink in it. Just got to be light. Got to be a little light for that to work. So just a couple little, couple little waves, couple little moments. Mm. And then, and here's what's super interesting. Um, I'm gonna grab, oh gosh, maybe my putty color, which is pretty useful, which is my um, purple and yellow, and I'm gonna grab some white. So it's a pretty light color, but it's not as bright. I'm gonna say white, mm -hmm. but it'll be lighter than the wave. Diane thinks this is just wonderful. Well, thank you, Diane. I agree. I agree. It's fun to do. Motions are just fun to do. They're just so relaxing. Continuing to add a little off white. And so like the white, what's nice is you want it to be in the in the purples or the blues so that it's not bright. Mm -hmm. Otherwise the sea foam will read a little weird. And really all you need is just enough contrast to show that that's, you know, kind of what you're dealing with. And go back and forth here, like. Because nobody wants weird sea foam. Well, I mean, we do, but. I'll deepen that a little bit over there. Just a little bit darker in the sea foam. Mm -hmm. And that's how we shade some sea foam. And some light coming through some wave, you know? Mm hmm I grab some just pure white and kind of come through here, just a little bit of it. I thickly apply some up here. It just gives it a little more. Oh. Yeah. Can even kind of splash it out. It'll be fun. And it should be fun. Because it's a wave. <laughs> All right. Let's call that a step, and then we'll finish the front wave, and we will be good. You think so? Yeah. And it's a, quite an ocean. I get that. I get that this is quite an ocean. But I mean, a perfect ocean view should take a little bit from us to do, right? Oh, hold on a I think second. the entire time that you're painting, you are spending mentally and emotionally in this vacation spot. No matter where you are in your life, no matter what is happening to you right now, you get to be here while you're painting this. You get to be in the worlds that you're painting while you're painting them. And then you get to be back in those worlds when you hang them on your wall and look at them later. So I think that's one of the things that's really wonderful about art as a healing resource, as something that really helps people, is that, you know, you're able to really find, uh, you know, your healing in that space. Okie dokie. Okie dokie, okie dokie, okie dokie, okie do. I don't know why I'm so excited about all that. I am, because we're getting to the... We're getting Rocky to the part. good part, right? Yeah. So I'm going to get my round blender again and a little of my red and I'm gonna make a bright orange. And I may put out some more yellow just because I've gone through a lot of yellow. Shockingly, this is a yellow painting. I just very something yellow. very light mm. right here. That's maybe a little too light. I'll rinse out and get a little yellow. I wipe it off some pure yellow. Yeah, and then also I want to kind of blow this up under the hmm. wave. 
I'm gonna add it, a glow under the wave. Now I'm gonna get into my orange. Is blending medium and glazing medium the same thing? No. Well, no. There you go. But um, uh, glazing medium is a blending medium. It's just that blending medium is not a glazing medium. So only, that's why I'm always, I'm not messing with you guys. It's just only this product. Slow drying extender slows down the drying time of your paint for acrylic color. Extends it means you can glaze with it. Things are slow drying, but they are not an extender, which means you can't glaze with it. Transparent colors will not be happening. I see. That's I a strong opinion yeah. to be having, but it's, it's true. And you can, what's wonderful is the company that makes that product, you don't have to, here's what, we live in a world where people just expect you to believe them. Because they're seen online or they have a voice on TV. What I'm going to say is you check what I say. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I check what I say. Mm -hmm. What I say to you is important and I do research and I make sure I get good information. But you can go to the Golden Artist Colors and you can ask them this question. And they have the best of the best of the best mm -hmm. working at their company. And they will tell you. Mm -hmm. And if ever I am misinformed, I correct it. Fast. I try really not to be because I, I don't enjoy the experience, but. Now, what are you doing there with your brush stroke? So I'm taking a little bit of my orange, which is my cad red and my yellow, and I'm curving over the top a little bit of the curl of the wave. There's a dark area because you the wave in the wave is here, not showing light, but then down here where it's thinnest, it would actually have some. I'm just making sure. Okay. I'm just making sure. That this is just kind of, and I'm kind of just scumbling out a little bit of this sort of orange over that green. I just think it creates some interesting space, right? Well, yeah, I'd say it's interesting. You'd say it's interesting? I'd say it's interesting, too. I'll get some I would never go out color. there to investigate it. Huh? I would not investigate it. You would never be in this ocean, would you? No. No. We don't want it. We never. don't even need to talk about he it. He would never. Not even the toes. Not even the toes. I'm going to take a little of my blue and uh, my green and purple. Seriously, have you seen the critters living in the sand right there on the beach? Like, and I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to go back and forth at the base of the wave with kind of like a back and forth motion. Can you see this with a little bit of a curve? I do. I watch the same nature shows you do. I mean, I thought the sharks were crazy, but whoa, some of the stuff in the sand. Like, I grew up in California. Do not dig in the sand. You will find stuff that will scare you. I don't know how scary it is. It is interesting. I like tide pools. I don't think John would be a tide pool person. No, I went to the um the saltwater marshes there in Houston mm -hmm. or in Galveston and learned about all the rays and stingrays and all the stuff. It's really cool. But it is super cool. And but it's only good on the bay side, on the Gulf side, all of the um oil rigs wash up the icky stuff so you can't really go to the beach out there without getting covered in tar so i'm making a very light different value for even the deep water because even though it's the deep water it should have some tonality to it mm -hmm. it shouldn't all be just one color and so when i go to put my sea foam over it that will really help it uh be you know what it is i'm going to get my brown and I'm going to come here and we're going to kind of make some deep, weird little ripples in, in the wave. I can get my glazing medium on there if I want it. What this, what this t teaches really, I feel what this mm -hmm. teaches is that it's the fundamentals of value and line and form mm -hmm. that make us perceive something as an ocean more than just it's the uh, blue and green. That makes sense. A little bit of personality there. And then I realized I've got some I could put here. There's some really great, I'm going to get some of this yellow with a smidge of green, smidge of green, and I'm going to come over here and kind of do that. Mm -hmm. because that'll let me pull in some really cool yellow highlights but while I'm working that out I'm going to get some of my orange and 
kind of come on the edge of this wave with a little bit of orange. And then later when I come back with my um, brown. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like doing that. I'm going to bring some yellow. And white. And dappled into that space. Mm -hmm. Pull some of those little lines down. Give that some dimensionality. All right. Now from here, we've got to put the highlights on. I feel like if we break the sea foam up, which is the last step, from this step, it will give you the best chance for getting this wave. Okay. So let's call it a step, and I'll come back, and I'll show you how you take sea foam to make this wave come together. Once you have these basic values, it really just pulled together for you. And I think that you'll find, like, you'll look at the ocean, unusual lighting. And again, I think we're going to see some really unusual weather. I've been, I, I watch a lot of stuff, and... Um, because I'm always making sure I'm answering your guys' question and being online and kind of tapped into like what you say you like and what you say you don't like. And I, I am sort of listening, not stalking, just listening. Um, what I'm seeing is that there's a lot more unusual weather pictures being posted. People are finding more unusual skies. And, you know, when I look at that online for causality, I, I think I see that we will see more of that. So it's just something to be kind of aware of, I feel. All the smart people think it's going to keep changing. All the smart people think it's going to keep changing, and I do like the smart people. Well, there may be smart people who don't think it's going to change, but I don't know any of them. They may be. I don't, I don't know. know them either. <laughs> but I don't know any of those people. Uh, and I want them to sit there and say those things in a peer-reviewed setting. <laughs> I'm willing to hear any opinion that you have in a peer-reviewed setting. That's my metric. I don't know what your personal metric is, but when, I, when somebody tells me anything, um, if I have a strong opinion on it positively or negatively, I go check it out. Mm. I do. John knows. I go yeah. like, it, it, I, I check it out. And, and what, how I filter the information, the copious amounts of information that are out there on everything, is that if the person who's willing to publish or speak to a peer-reviewed forum space, like people who work professionally in that industry also get to weigh in, then I'm, I give them a little more credit. <laughs> you know. A little more. A little more, which is why I haven't been sucked into flat, flat earth theory. That's all that. That's how I've been safe from that. Okay, I'm going to add a little, I'm going to add a little of my um, phthalo blue. To that interesting mixture. Now, this is my much more um, shadowy foam color, right? Mm -hmm. Shadow foam. Let's get some interesting shapes here. I think, uh, you know, like maybe a round shape could come in. You want to make sure you get a few distinctive shapes. So what I do is I put those in first, right, before they pull out of shape. So how I'm going to do this is I anchor recognizable sea foamish shapes. And then I anchor uh, what we expect to see happening for them to be pulling out of shape, right? Mm -hmm. And then I fill it in. And that does seem to help me keep a good perspective on what we're doing. And remember, it's never going to just be one color in your sea foam. That is not what is going to be happening. Mm -hmm. You will be shading the sea foam. <laughs> All right. So some of it will be in more highlighted areas, and then some of it will be in darker areas. It's really quite impressive. It is. Yes. That's very nice. I bring some of the wiggly 
even bit Whoops. down here. I like bring my sea foam up. Sea foam for me is one or two layers at least, sometimes three or four. Um, It is important to remember that it has, just like clouds, even though it feels like it's white, it's very rarely white or only white in certain spots. And so you got to really make sure that you're prepared. To shade it. Mm. And this is the other reason why I made sure that my groundwater here had a had a few values to it. Was just to make sure that uh, when I put the foam in, and I'm just on my toe, and you can see I'm just trying to make sure we have a regular little lacy shape. Mm -hmm. You got to give it a regular little lacy shape. So, and down here and come up. Right, we're just uh and we know we've got like some areas are gonna have a lot of splatter. I can come in and, and uh make sure that I've got um No, I don't wanna do that. Sometimes you can come in and even paint between the foam, different values and colors, but I don't think it's going to add anything to what we're doing. Now, down off the forefront, I'll pull some of this here and some of my phthalo blue, maybe a little bit of my burnt sienna to kind of tone it, gray it. Wow, that's such a cool looking wave. Yeah, there, right? Now, I'm going to be splattering, right? But just because I'm splattering doesn't mean that I can't start to speak to the multitude of values that is my sea foam. You don't want to rely on the splatter as your only way to speak to the shape of the wave. Sometimes, you know, people rely on just a single tool like, oh, well, I'm just going to do the whole thing fan brush. And you can but it doesn't really help you understand necessarily the structure of the of the way this front end we definitely want to have in shadow and we're going to come in it, it's not just even this bit here it is the values of foam Mm -hmm. Add a little bit of that. Uh, something uh, coming around here. Coming now. Now, we have some sh shadow foam, right? I'm going to come here, add a bit of a highlight. That's more white to my original sea foam color. Wow. Oh. It's certainly not white by any means. It's just a little bit highlighted. Adding a little highlight to the lace there. Little highlights to our sea foam that's down here at the base. Mm -hmm. No, but we're just, just, just there, but just a little bit of highlight. 
the whole thing. The whole thing isn't got to be bad for you. Mm -hmm. Some of it would have some highlights to it. Oh, yeah. So getting away from just having one value of something is a good thing. It's a great place to start when you're trying to think about how do I paint that. All right, it's a good place to start. Come around some of these little areas. Mm -hmm. Having to find them. Certainly going to come on top of, you know, some of this. Bring a little brush stroke over there. And... Again, we're just making sure that even what's underneath what we're going to splatter has some dimensionality. That will also help the splatter feel a little bit better. As well. mm -hmm. just so pretty so much nicer than the picture oh thank you this really did turn out that way fun now come in here i'm gonna pull this, a little of this yellow to the side and i'm gonna get some i mean white to the side and i'm gonna add a little yellow to it And we're going to come over the top of this. Over the top of that wave. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you know where to put the, the bright, bright part of the highlight? Where uh, I imagine the sun would be hitting it. Mm. I think about where could the light be hitting it, and then that's where I'm pretty sure in general, you know. And then, of course, observation of waves. You can, uh, you know, get a photo reference. You can get, uh, if you want a painting reference that you don't have to feel weird about, there's a lot of the marine paintings in the public domain. Hmm of the great masters and you can look at how they painted that um you know so like most of everything turner did right so you can look at that and observe that but i do think it's good to look at photos and kind of think about like oh well
that's pretty good. That's okay. We've got some top of wave. I can add a little bit of white here and there to the top of things. You know, and then the last step here, guys, is to take, now I prefer to use a fluid paint, a paint that's already uh, ready to splatter. It is ready to splatter because the body of the paint, the polymer that it's in, is uh, more soft. It's more self-leveling and it makes a better particulate for splatter. Um, craft paint is a similar body to this and can be used sometimes instead. I really like this because the pigment is so beautifully saturated in it and because it just it just gives me perfect perfect it's like the perfect consistency mm -hmm. i like to use my splatter brush that we designed for the galaxy set is it it really does it does look like a toothbrush it has a lot in common with it except you would never use it on your teeth because these bristles are so stiff right uh, that it would not be fun to use on your teeth so i load that up you can see i'm just tapping that up and down now i'm very familiar with this tool so i have a pretty good idea what it's going to do if you don't know what how your splatter is going to be do it on a scratch piece of paper before you do it on the painting you've worked on all day. Right? I do, to make this tool work, if you have my splatter brush, it's a very gentle flick. And I pull it the direction I want it to go. See? gentle and light if I want smaller droplets, deep and heavy if I want bigger, more traveling droplets. Mm. If I rinse out, I've got to be super careful with what I do because if there's a lot of water in the brush, it could make the stringy drops, which I don't want the stringy drops. I'm just coming through there and just making sure I got a nice wow. droplet. You can also, if you have an area you really don't want it to go, um, you can put a resist or a masking agent, like a piece of paper. Sometimes crumpled paper towels make a nice one. If you don't want splatter going everywhere, mm -hmm. you know. And you should always practice that, right? Always practice. I have a whole video on how to splatter, and we talk a lot about these little concepts like you should practice, you should prepare yourself for what you're going to do. Um, you don't want to find out right there that something about your splattering process is just not going to, I've dropped a piece of brush on there, is not going to work for you. you don't, that's not when you want to figure that out, right? And you can also do multi-tonal splatter. You could do a you could do a putty and then a lighter, lighter, lighter. You want to go into it like that. You can absolutely do that. And I do love the splatter of this brush. Things I don't love is if you put it in water at all, it just cracks and cracks and cracks. Um, but the filaments don't ever come out, so I have decided I'm okay with that. As long as, <laughs> as long as the business end of the brush stays there for me. Yeah. Um, but I have not left this in water, and it does just. Do this. So if that's happened to you, you're not alone in that. This is really pretty, though. I really like how this turned out. So you can see you can you've got quite a lot of control over everything. Everything. I'm very happy. Thank you guys for spending time with me. Um, I hope you will come uh, Saturday for the um, Red Hat. Uh, I think it is an hour. So if this seems long, that's an hour. Um, there is some really good watercolor stuff coming up for you. We're going to start doing some line and wash, which is super beginner friendly. And we're going to be doing like really gorgeous stuff that I think you guys are really going to want to paint. 
Um, that doesn't mean we won't still do like freehand and rough and open watercolor because we will because you know I love it. Um, I'm talking about doing a collaboration with my mom on August 6th. Um, and it's going to be a hop where she and I go back and forth between paintings. So you guys end up with six paintings in a theme, but we don't have to do all six because we switch. <laughs> um, I will put up an event uh, if that ends up being our final day, but definitely watch for that. I just want to say something to you guys. Um, we've got the retreat, so mm -hmm. we're going to be retreating for a minute. <laughs> retreating but we'll probably i think we'll have a how to paint blue without blue paint and the mm -hmm. red hat we're gonna have several drop things here, yeah. you guys yeah. while we are not live but it will be chat we'll make sure you have chat and moderators and everything that you need to be super happy people i'm going to take my uh brush and i'm gonna go ahead and do more of a the sea foam color mm -hmm. right I'm going to do more of that because I don't want to have a big bright signature that overwhelms my whole painting. There you go. A little bigger signature than I normally would like to do. But it's there. I hope you enjoy your result. And Man, hope that's so pretty. I like how the 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 wave just looks like it's lit up from inside. It is lit up from inside. That's what they do. They light up from inside. Mm -hmm. And it's such a colorful ocean. The sky is so colorful. The ocean is so colorful. Uh, this would be a really good painting. Big. Um, there's just painting oceans is always just a joy, right? It's just fun. And I know clouds can are challenging and water is challenging, but they're also so worthwhile. It's worth the effort and time to get those skill sets together. I want you guys to be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I will see you and Anisal really soon. Bye-bye.